Hello, I am Kira Bacon. And I'm Sam Pollock. And we're with the Game 2005, Assignment 2, Projectile Motion, Circular Motion, Free Body Diagrams, and Newton's Laws. Okay, and to get us started, I'll show off the part one of the assignment, which is, the, which is a report on the physics of the situation. Um, you can see in the first step, we've constructed a free body diagram to illustrate the forces in effect on the loop box. Uh, this involves the force of gravity, which pulls straight down, the normal force, which is applied perpendicular to the slope, and the force down the slope, which is based on the mass of the box and the angle of the slope. It's all that's illustrated here. And in part two, it involves determining the net force and acceleration in the situation. And then by applying formulas, we determine the net force to be 75.381 newtons. Next, with the acceleration, determined to be 5.88 meters per second squared. And finally, uh, based on the frictionless surface of the ramp, we knew the acceleration would remain constant in this situation. Um, next up, we've, uh, we've got that assuming that the box would slide off the ramp onto a flat surface with the coefficient of friction of steel on steel. We determine the new net force, the acceleration, um, and considering that the box had reached the, at the end of the ramp, the speed, um, and you can see the new values for the speed at the end of the ramp, the kinetic friction, as well as the net force and acceleration all here. Um, and then finally, based on the values determined in previous calculations, the time to stop was evaluated, evaluated to be 4.34.75 seconds, and the distance traveled in that time is 16.6684 meters. And then next, let's take a look at the program. So here we have the simulation. We'll run it at defaults. And you can alter the values of all sorts of things. And as well as some visual parameters. Beautiful. And we've got an additional function here that lets you draw the ramp instead of setting the values. And off we go. Okay, okay and Kira will talk yeah. about how the simulation actually works. Okay, so the majority of the simulation behavior takes place in the check collisions function. Let me take you there one second. Let's uh, play scene line 390. 390, here we are. So the function starts out by clearing the free body of the box of all forces, then adding gravity back in. After that, it uses only the x position of the box to determine which ramp the box should be colliding with, either the portion that is the sloped ramp or the flat portion after it. And if it's different from the ramp it was colliding with last frame, it simply rotates the box's velocity vector to have it be the same angle as the new ramp. Uh, it may not be good physics, but we'll ignore that for now. Then the next section starts at line 426. So in this section, the, um, the function determines the angles which are both perpendicular to and parallel to the ramp. It then uses these angles to determine the component of the gravity vector which is along each angle, creating two new gravity component vectors in the process. So while these two component vectors are only used for display purposes, they show up on screen, they don't actually apply forces to the box. However, the one which is perpendicular to the ramp can be used to derive the normal force, which does get applied to the box. Then, at around line 453, the coefficient of friction is read from the ramp. Each ramp can have its own coefficient of friction, and is multiplied by the magnitude of the normal vector, and then multiplied again with the normalized velocity vector of the box, to produce the force of friction. So, um, moving on from that to the free body, line 114, the forces that get added to the box get added to a class called the free body. The free body has two, two main uses. The first is for a visual display of all the forces being applied to the box, but then the second is just to obtain the net velocity vector, which is simply adding all of the force vectors together. 
And then in the box CPP around line 97 ish, this net force vector can then be divided by the mass of the box to produce the box's acceleration. Um, and that's all that's necessary to do for the box. Uh, once it has the acceleration, it simply uses delta time to add that to its velocity. And away we go. OK, and then I'll just give you a very quick tour of the updates labels function, um, which is the function that, uh, based, on, based on the parameters for the simulation, calculates the, the values that are going to display on the labels for the distance, time, and as well as the screen scale ratio. Uh, so initially, the values for time spent and distance traveled on the first ramp, which is the sloped ramp, are determined. Uh, next, we do the same for the second ramp, which is the flat ramp, uh, factoring in the speed at the end of the first ramp. Once these values are collected, um, the text of the labels are set. The distance of the and the length of ramp one is or sorry. The distance is the length of ramp one plus the distance slid on ramp two, and time is simply time spent on ramp one plus time spent on ramp two. And the ratio label gets the values from the scene scale variable on MP box and shows the meters as a fraction of this. And that's what we have. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh,